I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, and thanks to our friends on Facebook, Lavender and Stephanie, who asked for some more advanced flowers. We now have the second in our series of flowers for this month, peonies. Now peony happens to be my favorite flower, so it was fun learning how to do these. Now again, I've learned these along with you. So I actually am using quite a few tips, I'll show you which ones, and quite a few different methods. As it turns out, peonies are very versatile. There's lots of different ways to do them and lots of different ways for them to look in varying stages of being open, closed, or in a ball. So I've done them here on just a fake cake, a pan, so that we can show how to use them. We're going to use them later on in the month for a lady's hat cake for Mother's Day. So stay tuned for that one. These are a lot of fun. I can't wait to show you. Let's get started. So often you guys ask me the question, what specifically did I use for tips? Well, a better question is what can you use for tips? So these are some of the things that I used while trying out this ranuncula design. First, you're going to need some marshmallows and or some cake pop balls, some little ones about an inch wide and smaller. You can use either or of these. Um, I'm using my uh, wooden skewers. These are not dirty, they are worn well with food coloring. I like them seasoned. And I'm using a number 124, a number 127 rose tips, a number 104, we're probably gonna use a number four writing tip. You can use any size leaf tip that you want. And I'm also gonna reuse this one that we have used quite a bit recently. It's a number 402, it's a very large mum tip. So any combination of these will work. And you can see I've also got a coupler here. You're gonna need a good pair of scissors, and that's about it. So peonies are actually my very favorite flower. And I really had never tried to make them on a cake before because they're so complex. I thought about it and thought about it. And finally, because of our viewers on Facebook, I finally figured it out. Actually, it turns out that they're very similar to ranunculus. So if you saw the ranuncula video, you'll actually really get what we're doing here. It's the same thing, many, many, many petals, just ruffled this time. So I'm gonna dig right in. I'm gonna use my wooden skewer, and I am gonna start with one of our little cake balls. Really a peony is based on this little round ball. So I'm going to use that. I also want to show you guys the color that I'm using. So you know I love color striping and I striped just some white icing right up the back. And my favorite peony is the baby pink one. Now I want to show you that I'm starting with some icing. I have pink in there, just a regular bright pink, but I haven't mixed it fully. Peonies do have lots of striping and colors in them. And I think having a little extra color, plus I love color striping, will actually make them look more realistic. Peonies come in lots of pink colors and white. Um, they don't really tend to move into the purples or yellows, so pinks, reds, maroons, colors like that. I want this to have just a pale white edge. And I'm gonna start right in the center. Now with a rose, you know we would attach and twirl. We don't want that. We want just a straight up and down petal. And we're gonna do quite a few of those right here in the middle. Make sure that they don't look like a pinwheel. You want to keep adjusting the angle of the rose back and forth, just right here in the center, about like that. Now we can start adding in ruffled petals. Now this is another one that is inverted. So you kind of want your center to be lower than your outer petals. Also, you don't want this to be a pinwheel, so adjust back and forth. So I'm just taking a, a ruffle up and down. I'm actually lifting just a little bit off of my flower, up and down. Squeeze, ruffle, and release. So you want these short, these petals to be short and kind of even all around the center. Now the interesting thing about peonies is they do have multiple sizes of petals. So the smallest ones in the middle. Then as we get to the back, notice I'm going to be turning away from myself. And I'm going to ruffle up and I want these to be um, much larger petals than my inner petals. That's kind of the way a peony is. They wrap up and over the center ball. 
adjust, adjust so that you're not getting a pinwheel. Now you really could stop there if you want. You can see that that really is a peony, but I'm going to do one more ruffle to cover my ball down here. And really the more ruffles, the better. So you've seen the little short ones in the center, the middle sized ones, and then these big ones on the outside. I want to show you what that looks like from the back. And that is basically a giant peony. Now you can see how big this is. I mean, it's probably three inches across. Now, the trick to these, because this is a heavy ball inside, is you want to get really up under with your scissors and pull down on the ball as you twist. Twist the skewer out. Now you squeeze the scissors, get back up under there again, and just lightly push the ball off. And you can see I can place this right on the edge of my cake if I want to. I want to show you one more time using the marshmallow and hopefully you can see some different angles. I've got my marshmallow on. You can see that my skewer is actually sticking through. You want it to be really stable on here. These flowers get heavy and you'll start to wobble around. So I'm just going to do my center petals. Remember they're just a squeeze and a release. I don't want a pinwheel so I'm going to kind of go back and forth here. My next petals, remember I want them to be taller so I'm going to use a slight ruffle here stand them straight up and down on top of the marshmallow this is kind of a cool thing about the marshmallow that gives you a ledge for that remember to adjust your angles back and forth the next one I want to be about the same maybe slightly larger still I'm going straight up and down here so the cool thing about a peony is they really have so many stages of opening that you can do a million, what look like a million different flowers. Okay, the next one I'm gonna go larger, and you can see here it's just a ruffle up the side. You want them to be as tall as your last one. Now my flower's starting to get heavy. I wanna be aware of balance here. Okay, so I'm gonna switch out now to my 127 tip much larger and I've also lightened the color just a little, added more white and this ruffle I'm going to let, the only one I'm going to let come outward and just a slight turn of my skewer but I'm angling outward away from my flower and I'm using this much bigger. Now I can go one more if I want to here, be careful because they're very heavy at this point. And this one is going to angle slightly down, but you can add as many petals as you can get on here. Okay, so we've got a really, really big peony there. Now I can place this peony wherever I wish, on top, on bottom. I've got my scissors open. I'm going to plant it here on the side, just pull scissors lightly. And there you go. So if you saw the ranuncula video, you saw me do this trick. I've got icing here. If it's uh, buttercream, you want to use, uh, thin it down just a little. If it's uh, whipped topping, you don't have to do that, pastry pride. And it depends on how you pull up, whether or not how much kind of petal shape you get. I got just a little point on here. That's good. Do it again so you can get a little bit more. Take your finger and wipe underneath. Okay, so I can use it just like this because um, peonies are that ball form before they open. But I want to add a few petals to this just to show you that we can. You want them to kind of hug in places like so. And then just one more set. So you just have your ball here that's just starting to open. You can see there, you can even take your finger around the bottom and make it even more of a ball. And then with these, you can come in with just some green and come up the backs. Show you here, come up the backs. So you can see they look like they're just starting to open. I want to show you what the ball by itself looks like and how you can use it. So I'm just piping a green stem and a little ball underneath of it. I'm going to use the, the same ball technique 
And then I can place that just in front of that little ball. And pull up the sides with the green. I have one more quick method that I want to show you too. And this is with the number 4 O2 mum tip that we used for our tulips before. I'm using the cake pop, the round one you could use, the, a marshmallow as well. Um, I'm just wanting to go for that kind of very round um, globe look. And what you do with this is a little different. You're just going to pull it across the top and let it flare just a little. You're going to have a little bit of a straighter petal there in the middle. But I want this to look a lot like the peony that's just opening. So we're just going to continue. These aren't very roughly. They're straight just to start. But you're getting that nice round look and it's cupped inward. So then I'm going to start to pull up from the side. Now this is a little more difficult and you're going to have to pull at the end. But we want that really cupped look up the sides of a just opening round peony. You can kind of see what that's like. Okay, then lastly, this is a little tricky, but we're going to use this, come up the back and actually ruffle it. It cups, it's really interesting. You're coming up the back and ruffling this number 402 mum tip. It's really a different kind of a thing, but it's the only way to get that cupped in look. You can start to see it's a much looser, more open peony, but some of them do look just like that. So this was fun. I want to thank you guys for giving me your suggestions on Facebook as well as on my blog. I really appreciate it. Sometimes I get stuck in all the old things that I've done and I can't come up with new ideas. So I really appreciate when you guys suggest things. Now I can't always do them all because there's so many to do, but I do try to get as many as I can. And I think this will be super useful in our upcoming designs. Again, you guys can find me at Facebook at The Art of Frosting. You can find me at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. And now you can find me at The Woodshop TV on Etsy, where you can find some of my jewelry. Just a few pieces every month, they'll be there. Thanks for watching, you guys, and thanks so much for being on my Facebook community and reaching out to me.